Man, what a marathon edit it's been this evening and yesterday. Guys, hopefully you enjoy this video, but before we get into it, I've got to give away a gun skin, courtesy of well, me. So let's go ahead and pick today's lucky gun skin winner of the day. We're going to be giving it away to Anch Agrawal. He says, I need the four... You do you gotta you guys come on now. I'm giving away the yellow stripes, baby. You guys are asking for the moon here. I don't have three million dollars to buy skins, but I'm gonna hook you up with a skin nonetheless. I'll hook you up in game, Smarty Boy Anch. I will be uh friending you and sending you her shortly. That being said, guys, uh this is going to be a comparison of each and every scope. I look at it in a multitude of situations with a bunch of different guns, a bunch of different scopes, and a bunch of different shooting patterns. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. Make sure you watch all the way to the end because I do have a graph with recommendations recommendations, spray breakdowns, the whole works. Guys, enjoy the video. What is up guys, it is Power Bang. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be looking at the different types of grips. I promised you guys this video. We're gonna take a look at each and every one of them, and I'm gonna be using the M4 to uh, make our comparisons. It's probably the most stable rifle of the bunch, and it also takes all of the grips. So that's the one we're gonna take a look at for this comparison. I'm also gonna look at the SKS, as it does uh, take grips as well, and we're gonna look at what can be used on that particular weapon system. So here we go, first and foremost, let's take a look at the M4 with a two times scope on it. We're going to start out by looking at the vertical grip. So let's go up and find a common spot to take a look at here. I'm going to run up here to this line. You can see this little white line right there of pebbles with the black one in the middle. We're going to go put our feet right on top of that. And then we are going to zoom in with the two times and put it on the bottom of this, uh, the center target on the 100 meter here. So we'll put it on the bottom line and here we go off to the races. Not bad there. The first thing I notice is it's pretty accurate straight up and down and it actually ends with the cursor or the uh, the crosshair rather still on the target, which is pretty notable here. You'll see more of that in just a second. Here's round number two. It does start to go off to the right a little bit, but it does maintain a really, really good vertical recoil uh, staying on the target before going, you know, up. Look at that right up the center of the body. And again, ending not a single bullet is off the wood. That is the vertical uh, foregrip. Now we'll look at the angled foregrip. We're going to put it in the exact same spot. And here we go. In theory, we should see this thing uh, stay a little bit more stable side to side, and it definitely goes off the, uh, the the top of the wood. And it looks like it's got about four to five shots off of the top of the wood. We'll fire one more uh, burst through this thing real quick. And this one does stay right up the middle, but again, off the top there. Um, I don't notice a huge difference in the angled foregrip versus the vertical foregrip for the side-to-side -side recoil control. But there is a noticeable difference in the vertical control where the vertical foregrip is superior. Next up, we'll take a look at the light grip. The light grip, first of all, let's take a look at the actual de uh, definition for this. And you can see that on the bottom there, it says it is significantly increases stability and increases vertical recoil. It reduces recoil recovery. So the amount of time that it takes for that muzzle to come back to a resting position has been slowed down. It's now a lot longer to get back to a recoil recovery position and the vertical recoil has been increased. So you're gonna see this thing shoot way up in the air here. At least that's what the description leads me to believe. So here we go. Pretty good on the side to side. Um, that was literally like the exact same. Let me Let me actually throw it on the gun. So you're gonna see right here with the light grip, we'll throw it on the gun. Let's drop it in. It should go way off the target up into the air. Look at that, yeah, way up there. You can see kind of where that uh, that height is on the crosshair up into the trees. Light grip definitely will fire that thing way on up in the air. And again, I'm, I'm just showing you guys with no recoil control, I'm not touching it. You can see on my hand cam, I'm not even touching uh, the device with my other thumb. Uh, what I'm doing here is uh, kind of showing you naturally what the grip will do to the gun. But again, the light grip, it does not go side to side much. It goes straight up, uh, and that's pretty decent, actually. So as long as you can control it okay, uh, we'll look at that in just a moment. It's not a bad uh, grip to choose. Now we'll take a look at the thumb grip, and again, we'll take a look at what that is before we examine it. Reduces uh, scope op opening time, slightly reduces vertical recoil, and slightly increases stability. So increases stability, good reduces your recoil slightly, good, um, and it, it reduces the scope opening time, also good. So all of these things are positive impacts on the actual scope, so we'll throw it on the grip. So we will throw it on there, and notice how quickly that comes up. 
So you can kind of see how quickly uh, that definitely comes up. Let's compare that to the vertical. You can just hear it when it comes open. So again, we'll take a look at the thumb grip. Yeah, that's definitely much, much faster. So now let's go ahead and see how it operates. Oh, that's not bad. Right up the middle. And that was only a couple bullets off the target. Two to three. Let's see if we can duplicate that. This one goes way off to the left. And again, two to three off target. Uh, so not quite super consistent on its side to side spray pattern. And one more. It does go pretty much right up the middle with three off target. Not too bad here from the thumb grip. This is not, not too bad at all. Um, the added bonus of getting that uh, that sight on target much quicker. I don't know. It could be worth it. Now let's take a look at the half grip. The half grip does have a negative impact you can see in red there, which is reduces the stability when firing. Stability is your active uh, recorrection, I guess, of where that uh, grip is leading your gun. It reduces that stability, so it's harder to control the half grip, so it says, but it does reduce recoil and increases recoil recovery. So you're able to recover faster and you're able to have less recoil with this particular grip. Let's throw it on the uh, the weapon and we'll see exactly how that works. So three rounds here, three clips through it. Nice, that was actually pretty good. That was uh, second probably only to the vertical foregrip and only a couple bullets off target. But what I, what I like about this is this going right up the middle, almost very little side to side motion there. And this half grip is uh, definitely Definitely solid so far on the uh, recoil patterns here. So really big fan right now of the half grip and the way that performed. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at how we can actually control this recoil with each of the different weapons and we'll do that right now. It looks like we've got to reset the training room because it's going to close in one minute. We're not going to have time. So for testing out the scopes and their ability to actually control the recoil, I'm going to go to this white rock right here. That's kind of the, the landmark. And my goal is to actually use the three times scope on center mass on this 60 meter target. So 60 meters is where we're aiming. We're gonna aim right at that center mass. My goal is to keep all of the bullets in this like between here and between here, between here and between here. So somewhere in that box, that little uh, center mass target, that's where I'm trying to keep all of these bullets. And we are gonna test it with a three times scope so you guys can see it really well. And also the control of each particular foregrip. We're gonna first look at the vertical foregrip which, which increases the vertical distance uh, that the bullet travels. So here we go. We're using again, mobile device. We'll start out center mass. Here we go. So controlling that, not, not too bad. A few go outside. It does want to jump side to side just a little bit, but vertically, all those are pretty much in the same spot. And just like that, we are able to get, you know, a few more shots on target. Again, a few more kind of creep out to the sides a little bit as it does want to rise on you. Um, but overall, it's not too shabby. You can literally just drag it down. Um, but as we go further, it does get a little bit worse and the grouping uh, gets a little bit less tight. So again, uh, vertical foregrip feels pretty good. I'm going to fire one more just to kind of be sure. I felt like that last run wasn't really representative because I messed up, but hey all good so there it is it does want to go side to side on you a little bit but hey not bad not bad um you know not all in the center of that target but you know what that's what we're testing it for so here we go angled foregrip and again guys this testing is is fairly subjective it's very difficult to do this um all I can do is kind of give you my feedback on what it feels like because, you know, this is going to be different each and every time based on the fact that I'm dragging down. I'm not using a mouse or anything like that. I'm just using the device. So here we go. Angled foregrip. This should be easier to control side to side, uh, but let's find out. Yeah, definitely wants to rise a lot further. Look at that. I got to the bottom of my device and that angled wanted to go way up here. So um, I can actually try to grip my phone a little bit higher and demonstrate a little bit, you know, better. Yeah, that's pretty difficult to hold that angle down. It definitely wants to rise when in full auto. Um, we'll try one more. Yeah, so overall, uh, angle feels much, much uh, more likely to kind of raise up on the muzzle and get shots off target. Let's go ahead, take a look at the light grip now here. And again, this one where it was the increased stability but increased recoil. So the recoil should go way up. Uh, but I should hopefully be able to control it better. Let's go ahead and find out if that's actually the case. Yeah, you can see it right away. It wants to go up. 
and I am able to control it to an extent. The correction does, you know, bring it down a little bit, but I am outside of that center mass quite a bit, and it does want to jump once your finger gets to the bottom of your screen. And again, this is where your fire button can come in really handy. Those of you that have the fire button on the top of your device, so like up top, kind of where my guns are, you guys will have an advantage on players that have the fire button closer to the bottom of the screen. That's something uh, food for thought for you guys in, in your layouts. Mine is kind of right middle of the road. Normally I'm not firing an entire full clip at somebody, not dumping the whole magazine, uh, but let's go ahead and take a look. Definitely a pretty easy to control there. A lot of those on target, but again, always fighting the top of the range. So I feel like if you were to aim at somebody's belly button or something with the light grip and ha and be able to catch that recoil as it gets up near their head, I feel like it might be a good choice. Let's try one more time. Overcorrected there a little bit, but you can see after the initial correction, all those are pretty much kept right around the center. So light grip. Uh, the initial correction you've got to be on top of because it does want to jump on you pretty quickly. But if you can get on top of that, I feel like it can be an accurate uh, foregrip there. Next up, we're going to take a look at the thumb grip. Again, the thumb grip, guys, makes aiming super fast. You can aim down the sights very, very quickly, and it does reduce the recoil and increase the stability. Let's see how much, though. Hey, that's actually... That was actually pretty good, guys. Pretty good. I didn't feel a whole lot of rise at all. It has a little bit of side to side jump, but overall, that is probably the best yet as far as uh, holding the actual full auto. It rose a little bit there on me uh, at the end and it did go over to the side. So, thumb grip um, to me felt like, you know, pretty good, honestly. And the extra aim down sight speed, I feel like is a is a pretty good indicator of this scope's value, but check that out, or this grip's value. One more with the thumb grip, and we're, again, we're trying to put it center mass, and I mean, this is 30 rounds down range, all of them roughly in that target area. Let's go ahead, take a look at the half grip. Before we do that, again, let's remind ourselves what it does, reduces the recoil and increases recoil recovery, but reduces stability when firing. So this should be better overall, but harder to control. So it should not excel in this test um, based on its description, but I have a feeling it's gonna do okay. Let's go ahead and check this out. So here's the half grip. Um, not bad. Honestly, it goes side to side a little bit, but it did not want to rise on me that much. Side to side again uh, was difficult towards the end of the round, or ten, towards the end of the magazine uh, specifically. That's not bad though, guys. Look at this. That's pretty good. Only three to four rounds outside of the center mass target. We will do one more with the half grip here just to kind of see if we're, uh, you know, anywhere in the ballpark on consistency. Pretty good on vert rise. Pretty good on vertical rise there. Um, the half grip, not too shabby at all, but where I feel like the half grip excels is in that 10 to 15 round burst. Um, it starts getting squirrely after about halfway through the mag. So check this out. If we went 10 to 15 rounds, here we go. That's pretty good. 15 rounds pretty much in the same spot. And there's the other 15. That half grip is solid, but again, once you get past that 15 rounds, eh, eh, that's when it starts bouncing quite a bit. So if you can control yourself here on this half grip, very, 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 very precise. I mean, that is that is solid. Let's dump the last 19 rounds here from the half grip into the target. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. So let's give some overall uh, thoughts on all of these grips. So I wanna fire one more magazine full of each one of these grips so I can kind of remind myself as well as you guys the uh, the look and the feel of these, each particular grip, and then we'll kind of react to it. So here's 60 meters, here's the target. We're gonna try to keep the vertical grip now in center mass. Overall, I feel like the vertical grip is probably right up there, at least in the top two grips as far as stability when you're firing, as far as that muzzle rise, keeping that, uh, it basically does what it says it's gonna do. It keeps the vertical recoil much lower when you're firing at a target, and that could be incredibly important, especially the further that target is away from you. Next up is angled. Again, we've got the angled, and we're gonna fire right here. 
and I was fighting that kind of hard and also at the very edge of the phone right at the end of that magazine I kind of had to you know cross my fingers that it wasn't gonna rise on me too much I feel like the angled foregrip is one of the worst performing foregrips of the five uh, it, it really doesn't control the side-to-side -side recoil as much as it should um, the horizontal recoil is pretty well, it's noticeable for one, and it's not much better than the vertical or the half or, you know, I really don't see the value in the angled foregrip if you're going to be uh, struggling to control that vertical recoil. So the angled foregrip is not one that I would recommend. Now we've got the light grip and the light grip again, remember it increases the recoil, but also increases stability. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. I feel like the light grip is definitely all over the place as far as being able to control. You can see those shots are pretty much everywhere. Very hard to actually control um, because the recoil is so substantial. Now, I feel like players with their fire button towards the top of their screen with more distance for their finger to travel as they're able to drag their finger down may see better results with automatic gunfire, but the light grip is also one that I would probably avoid for most walk-around situations where you're just looking for an accurate foregrip to have on your weapon. Now for the thumb grip, and this one is probably the most intriguing to me simply because of the extra speed that you get like in aiming down the sights. You can see how, probably giving you guys seizures, sorry about that, but like literally it's super snappy. And this is really important when it comes to close quarter combat and really intimate encounters. Rather than hip firing like I often do, the thumb grip now gives me the time I need to be able to aim down the sight at a target. And this could mean the difference in landing accurate saw shots and picking up that insta headshot when you enter up compound. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the spray pattern here of the thumb grip and again it, it wow I mean that is really good really really tight group there I mean thumb grip I'm gonna shoot one more uh, round through this just to kind of see Definitely struggles on the side to side, but the vertical is easy to control the recoil is reduced well enough to keep I mean starting here uh, Let's see starting right here at this a the highest like basically here was where we start and that was about as high as it got right here. Um, so that's the spread of vertical. And now let's take a look at the half grip, which to me has also been fairly surprising as far as its performance. Here's 60 meters, we'll go center, uh, center mass and try to keep it on target. Here we go. Eh, not too bad, not too bad. We're gonna go one more with the half grip just to kind of make sure I didn't have any user error there. Again, impressive. The half grip, not bad at all. Very tight grouping. Uh, the thumb grip, probably the tightest grouping, followed by the half grip, followed by the vertical foregrip. Um, I'm honestly su surprised by these results a little bit, uh, but again, the testing doesn't stop here. Let's go ahead and take this uh, a little bit further down range, and we're gonna equip these thumb grips, uh, or all types of grips, foregrips, thumb grips, half grips, light grips, uh, angle grips. We're gonna put all of these on uh, an SKS to see how that kind of recovers uh, with a marksman rifle. So standing on the black dot between these two, uh, you know, the 15 and the 10 meter here, we're gonna stand right there and we are going to aim down range. Well, after we get a scope on there, we'll put a three times on there, I guess. You know what? All right, so here we go. We'll grab a six times scope, but go back to our spot. There we go. Let's aim down range and we're gonna put it right here on this target. And my goal is to fire 10 consecutive rounds, firing each shot as the uh, recoil comes back. And I do not want to touch uh, with my right hand. I just basically wanna fire and see how far the vertical recoil climbs. So let's go ahead and first uh, do one shot. And you can see where that, uh, that resets to. So it's just off the target to the top. Let's go uh, try this again. The reset again is just off to the top uh, left this time instead of top right. A little higher on that one. Up about the roof there. So that's kind of where it's kind of coming to a rest, somewhere between the roof and the top of the target. That is your vertical recoil. Again, uh, you can kind of see uh, the different samples there. That one was pretty good. All the way up to the top of the roof here. And there it is. So, not bad with the vertical. Let's go ahead and take a look at the angled and see what kind of recoil uh, reset we have here. Um, here we go. Eh, not to the roof. And this is with the angled foregrip, guys. All the way up on the roof, so definitely higher recoil on this one. 
Again, up to the roof. Not bad on that one. And I guess there's a degree of randomness to this, right? To make it so it's not super predictable, so you can't just laser people over and over and over. Way up there on that one. Way up there on that one. Not bad. Way up there, and there we go. All right, so that was your angled foregrip. The, the reset's definitely worse than the vertical. Let's go ahead and take a look at the light grip now and see what that comes in and does. Way up top, that's a huge amount of recoil for this uh, particular scope. Again, almost higher than the roof there. Up to the roof, we still haven't had one below the roof yet. Right up to the roof again. That one's a little bit below, way up top. So yeah, you can see the light grip here. Uh, significant amount of recoil. I mean, that's almost over the roof. I don't know if that's like doable, you know? It's funny because like my thumb, as I'm pulling it off, it's sweaty enough to, to pull the, the scope a little bit when I release. Normally I would keep it on there. So that is your light grip. And again, not impressive at all. Uh, when it comes to the SKS from Marksman Rifle. Again, that thumb grip, though, look at how quickly that scopes in. An impressive recoil here. Another impressive recoil. Very impressive recoil. That's a little bit higher, although I shot high. Very good. Very good. Very good. Dude, this is, uh... This is easily the best so far. This is this outshines the vertical by a, a fair bit. Uh, so the thumb grip right now is the champ on the recoil reset here. Not bad there from the half grip, and we are not going to finish. We will be right back with the rest of the half grip. All right, we're back with the half grip. Here we go. First shot, very impressive. Second shot, eh, not so much on the roof. Again, impressive on the roof. Very impressive, very impressive, on the roof, very impressive, very impressive, very impressive. So again, the half grip probably takes second place there. Um, we gotta rank the vertical, you know, recoil coming back. The best easily uh, was the thumb grip, then the half grip, then the vertical foregrip, um, and then the angled grip, and then the light grip is the worst. So that is kind of what you're seeing uh, with the Marshman rifle. Just reset with no hands on the device. Now let's look at how we can control the, the gun with those thumb grips, with the grips on them. All right, we are back in our happy spot. We're gonna see uh, how many people wanna mess with me here, but we're on our happy spot, and I wanna see how I can control the recoil uh, with each particular grip. So first is the vertical. Felt pretty good, I had to take a couple shots to get used to it, so let's do a couple more, um, if I can see. I cannot see. Come on, man. Let me make a video. Unfortunately, we'll have to move to the left a little bit. Not too bad there, honestly. The, the vertical feels pretty decent for firing a lot of follow-up shots. We had one off target there. Let's take a look at the angled here. Whoops, wrong gun. There we go. Angled. This is going to be same type of deal. A lot harder to get back to that main. I think I got the recoil down there that turned out to be okay towards the end. Angle feels pretty good uh, for firing this. It's, it's not too bad. Um, you just kinda gotta keep your hand on it and control it. Let's take a look at the light grip now. This one is supposed to be the worst, so we'll see. I think I put the most shots on target there with that one firing uh, repeatedly. I mean, look at that. You do get the, uh, the m more often you get one that's kind of off target with this. Uh, at least that's how it felt to me because you, you do have to control it a little bit more, but it is able to be controlled, so it's not like not usable. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the thumb grip here. Now, while having the most impressive results, the thumb grip feels the worst firing it uh, rapidly. So that's kind of interesting. 
Yeah, something about the accuracy for the reset on the thumb grip. I'm gonna fire it one more time, actually, um, because it just doesn't feel right. Interesting. So I, th I was expecting better results there, but the thumb grip, not a huge fan of firing that pretty much semi-auto as fast as I can go. Now here is the half grip. That one was pretty decent. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty decent. Let's do one more with the half grip. The half grip feels really, really good. Like really solid. Let's load up some more ammo. Maybe we'll make them go elsewhere. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> Those are all bullseye, man. Those are all bullseye. So it's it's the cadence. Let me uh, let me try that over. I tried to shoot it a little faster that time. I just got to slow it up a little bit. I gotta say the thumb grip shooting at this time around feels much better. Let me try one more time. I like it. I like it. The thumb grip's up there. Uh, better than the angle. Better than the vertical for sure. Um, light grip, I still think, probably has a small advantage just based on the reset. Uh, but again, very, very difficult to, to tell the difference between those two. Last one we're going to look at here again is the half grip. And then we'll move on. That was near flawless, dude. That was, uh, that was pretty good there. I'm gonna try one more because I'm really tempted to say the half grip is just like my favorite of all these. Yeah, I, I gotta say the half grip's probably my favorite. Um, we're gonna put the half grip on top above the thumb grip and the light grip, I think, or uh, let's go half grip, thumb grip, light grip, angled grip, vert grip. So surprisingly, the vertical foregrip. The one I thought that would do the best is my least favorite on an SKS or a Martian rifle. So, interesting. Food for thought there. So, number one overall on my list for grips that I'm going to pick up if I see it over all others is, surprisingly, this one. And I will show you guys exactly what left that type of mark with a 4X full auto. It just happens to be the half grip. I was uh, surprised with this result, to say the least. Now, my second... Uh, grip, not scope. Second grip that I will pick is this one, the vertical. The side to side on is pretty, uh, pretty crazy, but the vertical is good. You can see that line right where I was trying to shoot. Number three, the thumb grip. That quick ADS, really like that. And uh, let's take a look at the accuracy. Not too shabby at all. There we go. Number four, I will take the angled grip. Now, again, not my favorite in most situations, but it does uh, it does okay. It does okay. The side to side isn't bad, but it's not what it should be. Uh, and last, I'm going to take the light grip. I'm getting rid of rid of this in pretty much every scenario, as uh, it's it's pretty difficult. It does uh, decent there if you get lucky on your pull down with it. I did in that particular scenario. But it is kind of a beast to control. The stability is uh, not my favorite. There is a lot of recoil there. And especially when you're trying to control pop shots here, like one, two, like this. It ha it's, it's hard to put them in the same spot, basically. Whereas another particular grip you might be able to use. You can literally put multiple on the same target. Just a uh, small little pull down and it's pretty decent here. So I'm a fan of this half grip. Uh, I also really like the vertical. So those are my findings uh, for the scope or for the grips, guys. Uh, let me know if you agree in the comments. Again, this is pretty subjective, but at the same time, I've been, uh, I've been on the range a long time. This is my fifth or sixth range in a row that I've tried. Put these things through the paces a little bit tonight. And again, uh, there are two uh, probably three grips that I would say, yeah, I recommend picking those up uh, pretty much any time. And that is going to be your half grip, your uh, vertical foregrip, and your thumb grip. Those are the three that I think make a, a pretty tremendous impact in your shooting. 
And there are two, the angled and the light grip, which not a huge fan of, uh, with the exception of on the SKS, surprisingly. So I feel like if you're rocking a Marksman rifle, maybe the light grip is something that you pick up. But other than that, stay stay away from it. Uh, guys, hopefully you learned something this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed the, uh, the comparison. This is Power Bang. I'm signing out. I will catch you guys in the next one.